about five o'clock right now in the morning. Slight little drizzle. I have a little bit of an umbrella thing above my camera. Hopefully everything will work and it won't ruin my camera. But I need to do a little bit of an angry rant against the followers of Donald Trump because you are being deceived by a very clever man. Um, and let me say this before I get started on this video. Uh, this is going to be an extremely important one that I need to say some very important points. Point number one, I have been a lifelong registered Republican. I am not a liberal Democrat, never have been one, never will be one. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, I do not believe that Joe Biden lawfully won the last election. I think that he was put in. That's why I call them selections. I don't believe in elections. Um, I think that Donald Trump stepped down and um, had Biden come in. And there's a spiritual, spiritually significant reason for that, um, <clears throat> which is a big problem for our nation. Um, but I want to go over a few points here of just to try to remind my viewers out there, if you are a follower of Donald Trump, I want to remind you of what that man did during his presidency because people have such a short attention span anymore um, because of years of watching television and all the camera angle shifts and everything else, people can't remember things. They're forgetting um, what happened during Trump's administration. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that he was the worst president for America up to that time. Joe Biden, of course, has far eclipsed the bad things that Trump has done, but um, it started with Trump. I mean, it goes back further than that. Uh, we haven't had a good president in a very long time, but what I'm saying is Trump did some things that uh, no other president did before him. And um, <clears throat> I want to talk about those things in this video. Um, for all the people out there that uh, think that he was a great man and that his first presidency was great, it wasn't. Um, number one, uh, do you remember what happened in 2020? Uh, the worst tyranny in American history. Um, <clears throat> businesses were closed permanently, many, because of the uh, certain things that happened in 2020. Don't you love how my freedom of speech has been taken from me? And I'm not allowed to tell you exactly what I mean by that. But you remember there was a certain uh, health emergency that came out, which didn't actually turn out to be an emergency. 99% of the people that got that emergency uh, recovered. That's not an emergency. But they shut down businesses. Oh, is your business uh, deemed worthy to stay open? No? Um, well, we'll, uh, we'll let McDonald's stay open and Walmart stay open, but the big corporations, the big chains, but gyms and workout facilities and things and smaller mom and pop restaurants, oh no, sorry, you're not uh, deemed necessary, you're not needed, we're going to shut you down. And a lot of those places, they couldn't handle it and they closed permanently. Hmm, is that the mark of a good president? Would a good president do that? How about uh, shutting down the economy? Stay at home and we'll send you a stimulus check. Um, don't worry about it, everything will be fine. And a lot of people that uh, stayed home, they, again, they had major financial problems because of that whole issue. Um, <clears throat> how about a emergency use authorization experimental drug that people within uh, the medical field were saying it's not been properly tested. It hasn't, you know, we, there hasn't been enough time to deem it if it's safe or, or not and, and we should test it. There should be more testing time. No, sorry, we need it right away. Um, and if you study it, uh, looks like a lot of people died from that. Um, Trump started that. Biden continued it. What about that? All you Trump followers out there think he did a great job. How about the uh, DNA swab tests, the PCR tests that took your DNA, samples of your DNA? How about that? Well, I mean, what about that? Oh, that's fine. Everything's okay. We, you know, we can just... Um, give away our DNA. Let people stick things up in our noses and take it out. Oh, there you go. And we can, depending on the cycle threshold that you use, you can get a positive or a negative. Um, that's okay. And the creator of that test said it's not supposed to be used to uh, diagnose illness, only to find genetic material. 
And um, he was killed right before the whole thing got started. Huh. Dr. Kerry Mullis, you can look that up. How about uh, Operation Warp Speed, the threat of um, martial law being instituted? What about that? This uh, great Donald Trump was going to roll out the military and he was going to go around and forcibly inject people. And he was a good president, was he? You want to vote for this man again. You want to get this guy in. You're saying, God bless this man. Uh, you got a little problem, don't you? Hmm. How about the uh, elderly people that had to die alone? How many people went through that? I partially did. My father died during the whole thing. I couldn't go see him. A lot of people lost their loved ones and they couldn't be by their bedside. Good president. He was a good, great man, greatest president that we ever had in America. Really? Are you that stupid? Some of you are. How about the uh, triple P loan theft? How many people went and got that? Celebrities going and taking out triple P loans and, and things. What about that? Was that a good thing? It was good for the economy, best economy ever, and whatever else. Yeah, uh-huh. And how about the uh, churches out there that closed because of the uh, thing that Trump brought in? Hmm. That's a good thing, huh? I mean, well, the only good thing is it just showed how fake the churches are, that they don't actually worship Jesus Christ. They don't actually follow Jesus Christ. They're government institutions. That's all that it proved. How about the uh, George Floyd Black Lives Matter riots? where the police stood down and allowed the cities to be burned. Hmm. That was a good thing. That was a good part of uh, American history, huh? I don't think so. You say, well, but, yeah, but he made a, a good, strong economy. Oh, by, by lowering interest rates down to, what, 1%, 2%, something like that? That was a good thing, which allowed the big investment firms to come in and buy up lots of real estate, thereby driving up the prices so the average person can't afford a home anymore? Was that good? Was that a good thing? Some of you, I guess it is. How about quantitative easing? Four different cycles of quantitative easing that Trump did. Over $7 trillion added to the national debt during his first presidency. And if you think he's not going to do it again, um, you're very mistaken. Well, let's get those interest rates down and whatever else. Yes, yeah, so inflation can explode. Look at how much inflation has gone up during the last two uh, presidential regimes. You want more of it, huh? I mean, there's nobody else but Trump or Biden. Well, now, but not Biden. Now we have Kamala Harris, you know. The, the, what great, uh, you know, choices we have we're being given here as Americans. Uh, maybe you ought to just wake up to the fact that um, we're not being given a choice on purpose. And um, how about the fact of Trump being a friend of Jeffrey Epstein? What about that fact? Photos of him and his wife which, you know, current wife, not one of the many that he's had, um, Trump there, and he's, he's got uh, pictures of himself with, um, what's her name, uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell or whatever her name was, and him and he's standing there with Melania. Oh, but, you know, there's no connections there or anything else. And, and what happened to those uh, Epstein files that were supposed to come out? What happened to that? Huh. How about the fact that Trump has also been connected to the perverted pro wrestling world? The wrestling world that different wrestlers have actually had enough courage to come out and say it's filled with uh, pedophiles and perverts. They do all sorts of perver perverted things and whatever else. You can look it up, you can find it on YouTube. Hmm. So Trump is connected to Epstein Island and also the perverted pro wrestling world. Just but I guess he's God's man there on the inside, kind of convicting them of their sins. Uh, yeah, sure. Because Trump wasn't a pervert at all. No, no, he wasn't a pervert. Never. Uh-huh. And uh, let's not forget the fact that Trump lied about the blood on his hand. He said, oh, I was there, and he said, I felt this thing. He's at the Republican National Convention. I went like this, and I looked, and my hand's covered in blood. Just covered in blood. And you can watch the videos, and there's no blood on his hand. So he lied to you. He lied to his followers. And you're okay with that. You're okay. 
This is the man that we need to have leading our country. We can't fall on our knees and say, God, spare us from this evil man. No, no, we have to get this guy in. This, he's the guy that we need. He'll make America great again. <laughs> um, how about the uh, fact that Trump, unlike any other president in U.S. history, popularized the use of foul language um, on flags supporting him? I get so sick and tired of that. As a Christian preacher, I have to drive around now and see roads where people are flying Trump flags from their properties that says the F word, Biden. Now, I'm a little bit old school, I guess. I used to think that that word, the F word, was another way of saying fornication. That you want to have a sexual relationship with somebody. If you're going to F them, that means you're going to have sex with them. Just to be very blunt about this. Um, so I guess apparently the people that are flying these flags must want to have a sexual relationship with Joe Biden. I guess perhaps, I don't know. I don't really understand that. Oh, there's other ways to mean it. Yeah, because you're vile and you're filthy, just like the man that you're supporting. But that's okay. That's all right. Because he's what we need for this country. He's going to turn things around. Yeah, kind of like when a crocodile kills something and it flips them around and around, the death spiral. That's what he's going to do. And here he came out recently and he was giving a speech and he said, you vote for me, he said you won't ever have to vote again. And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you Christians, I'm not Christian. I love you, get out, you gotta get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good, you're not going to have to vote. Yeah, he's telling you the truth. You know, it's kind of an interesting thing, a little bit symbolic here, a little spiritual stuff going on. 45th president, and then he'll be, he wasn't the 46th, he'll be the 47th. 45th, 4 plus 5 is 9. 47th, 4 plus 7 is 11. 9, 11. Hmm. Nothing to it, of course. That's conspiratorial talk. We shouldn't speak those ways. We should just be clear and honest and, and support the man because he's, the, his idiot followers are out there in the stands with flags and just waving it. No, let's support the, the worst president in American history before Joe Biden. Joe Biden did pretty good on his own, you know, being the, uh, even worse than Trump. But now we have uh, Trump to look forward to. Just insanity. I cannot believe that people are falling for this. You say, well, this is a doom and gloom video. Yes, it is. Very much a doom and gloom video. But you know what? There's some good news. You say, how could there be any good news? Um, well, the Bible calls it the gospel. And um, it's great to understand the gospel and you get to go to heaven when you die and everything else if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. But you know, there's another part of that gospel. And that other part of the gospel um, is that Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried, okay? And if that's where it ended, then he wouldn't be any different than Muhammad or Buddha or any other savior out there. Um, but it didn't end there. Jesus rose from the dead. He died on the cross to pay for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He was seen by hundreds of people before he went back up to heaven. And he can be your savior. You can study the gospel. You can study the fact that these things were prophesied. See, we're heading into a one world government. We are heading into a new world order. Novus Ordo Seclorum. Like on the back of the dollar bill. Like these free Masonic people you have been plotting and planning. And there's more I'll be saying in the next video on this issue of Trump's connections to the Jews that serve the Pope, the mingled, the miry clay that yokes up with the iron, the fifth kingdom that I've preached about. A lot of people don't get it. They just make it into this anti-Semitic rant and whatever else, the Jews are all bad and whatever. That's not the issue. You're not understanding the whole picture. Um, <clears throat> but I've talked about it before. I won't get into it here. But the fact is, I have hope for what's coming. Not because I believe that everything's going to work out just fine and Trump actually won't be so bad. No, it's going to be death. It's going to be the death of this nation. Um, my prediction, when he is selected, when he is put in, 
there will be civil unrest. The civil unrest will turn into a civil war. And in that civil war, there will also be some stuff going on with the BRICS nations. Um, the dollar will crash. And I don't know the timing of it all or whatever else, but these are the big things that are coming. And I believe that a lot of the cities in America are going to get nuked. Quite frankly, a lot of people say, well, the nukes have to be set on the ground first. They're not actually air dropped or whatever else. Okay, then it's probably already happening that they're getting this stuff set up. Um, I mean, they had the whole public announcement thing a few years ago about uh, what to do if uh, New York City gets hit by a nuke. <laughs> um, I think I should kind of warn you a little bit about what is being planned. But you see, you can have hope in this whole thing. You can put your faith in Jesus Christ. You see, the Apostle Paul, he wrote and he said, For to me to live is Christ. I'll live for Jesus Christ. And to die is gain. That doesn't mean you get some kind of special place in heaven if you wage holy jihad or some kind of nonsense Islamic uh, filth stuff there, teaching. No, no, it's not about killing people and whatever else and you get a better place in paradise or something. That's not what it means. It means that I know that Jesus Christ is my savior. I've called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. I put my faith in what's written in the scriptures and I say, I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood to pay for my sins. You take the time to study what the Bible says about the gospel. You study it, you research it, you say, I put my faith in that. And you pray to God, you ask him to save you. He's the one that will save you. You can't save yourself. If the Holy Spirit right now is drawing you, you're feeling this tug, you're saying, maybe I should learn about this. You know, maybe it will get bad enough that I might not be able to survive. Maybe I'll be one of the ones that dies. I might die. Even as a Christian preacher, I might be one of the ones that gets killed in what's coming. I have no guarantee. God doesn't say I'm just going to spare your life and whatever else. A lot of saints have died horrible deaths down through the centuries. I have to accept that. I can't just say, oh no, not me. But you know what, I'm ready to die. Not because I want to die, not because I'm some suicide bomber or some kind of thing like that. No, I'm ready to die because Jesus Christ is my savior and I know whatever happens, I hear a gunshot and, and that's all I hear and I drop down dead, I feel the pain of the bullet wound and I drop down dead. I know that when I take my last breath, Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I know that. I have an assurance of my salvation. And there is nothing in this world that is more important than you getting that figured out. There is hope in what's coming. Um, again, I've talked about the military website. The military website, uh, deagle.com. Oh, that's it's been debunked and whatever else. Has it really? Has it really been debunked? Um, well, they're saying 75% reduction in the population by 2025. Hmm. 2025. Uh, this is the, I think, the 30th of July today. Of 2024. Don't have a whole lot of time left. Is it going to be by the time the year 2025 comes in that 75% of the population of America is killed off? Or is it going to be no, it will be uh, through the year 2025. I don't know. But uh, a lot could happen very quickly. And you could find yourself in a very hopeless position. And a position where you need Jesus Christ. Um, I suggest that you... There's links in the description box down below that uh, go through the scriptures, show you how to be saved. Um, you don't, you're not going to become a member of my private little cult that we call church building. And you come to me and you give me 10% of your income and whatever. I'm not after that. I'm not after that at all. Um, <clears throat> this ministry operates from people that say, I'd like to donate to the ministry. I'd like to give a gift to the, the guy for what he preaches. Um, I'm not monetized. I don't force anybody to give a donation. You can if you want to. You don't have to. It's just that simple. I don't, you say, well, this is all just for your own personal gain. There is nothing for me to gain except rewards in heaven. That's all I'm looking for. I truly believe what I preach. If I didn't, I wouldn't be putting my uh, life at risk here because I realize I'm dealing with some very dangerous people and they could hunt me down as a result of this, of what I'm telling you. Um, God will be my protector. God will be my provider. I'm not worried what man will do to me. So... 
uh, please take heed to what I'm saying. And if you think that you're going to vote for Trump and, and you know, we'll get him in there because the other option is much worse. You know, Kamala Harris or whoever else will be running by that time, that's much worse. And what are we going to do? And, and let me say this, if for some reason Trump wouldn't get in, they're still going to do the same thing. It'll just be with the whatever leftist politician. Um, America's in trouble. America's in very big trouble. Uh, there are very qualified um, men in this country that could lead this country and they could know what to do to bring America back and fix the problems and whatever else. And we're not being given those people as choices. We're just simply not. Um, because this nation is under God's judgment. And one of the ways that God judges a nation is by letting them have a bad leader. And uh, I feel compelled to tell people about that. Um, please take heed to my words. Um, and I will say this to close the video. Goodbye, America.